Yes. You, you were one of them? Yeah, somewhat, yeah. What number? I was 196. So did you get your picture in the paper? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the ranking isn't just an ego trip. The top kids get to choose which campus they want and which major. It's a big deal in India. It is. Narayana Murthy, founder of the huge software company Infosys, is known as the Bill Gates of India. It's very easy to lose hope in this country. It's very easy to set your aspirations low in this country. But amidst all this, this competition among high-quality students, this institution of IIT sets your aspirations much higher. Now, what about your own son? Well, my son, he wanted, probably wanted to do computer science at IIT. To do computer science at IIT, you ought to be in top 200. And he couldn't do that, so he went to Cornell instead. Think about that for a minute. A kid from India using an Ivy League university as a safety school. That's how smart these guys are. I do know cases where students who couldn't get into computer science at IITs, they have gotten scholarship at MIT, at Princeton, at Caltech. Yes, sure. You wouldn't mistake this for MIT or Caltech. It's the final exam of metal fabrication class required for every IIT freshman. Call it shop class on steroids. Using just a saw and a file, students have to cut quarter-inch steel into an assigned shape, measured to the millimeter. It's an illustration of IIT's emphasis on engineering basics, precision, and discipline. Nobody majors in music at IIT. The education is not well-rounded. But in science and technology, IIT undergraduates leave their American counterparts in the dust. When I finished IIT Delhi and went to Carnegie Mellon for my master's, I thought I was cruising all the, all the way through Carnegie Mellon because it was so easy relative to the education I had gotten at IIT Delhi. If you think of engineering students as nerds, not particularly bold or creative, IIT somehow breaks the mold. It turns computer geeks into risk takers and leaders. I'm wondering why so many IIT graduates are entrepreneurs. Why so many do start their own companies. I think it's because of the confidence. We are lucky enough to be told by people around us that we're good and that we have a bright future and that gives us a lot of confidence. There's something else. Students act like entrepreneurs the whole time they're at IIT. They run everything in the dorms, which might be mistaken for cell blocks if not for all the Pentium 4 PCs. They organize the sports themselves. They even hire the chefs and pick the food in the mess halls. And unlike so many other institutions in India, they all know they're here because they deserve to be here. Can you slip somebody a couple of rupees and say, come on, get my son in? No. No, never. Impossible? N impossible. Impossible. There is no corruption. It's a pure meritocracy. IIT may also be one of the best educational bargains in the world. It costs a family just about $700 a year for room, board, and tuition. That's less than 20% of the true cost. The Indian government subsidizes all the rest. While well, some IIT grads stay and have helped build India's flourishing high-tech sector, almost two-thirds, up to 2,000 people, leave every year, most for the U.S. Some people would say, you're subsidizing factories uh, which produce largely for the higher end of the American employment market. So there's this debate here that says, why are we spending so much money to educate these brilliant young men who just leave? You don't have to be crudely nationalistic to raise this question. There's a d need here, there's a demand here, and these guys are simply not available. How many of them ever come back? Very small percentage. But my view is that we also have to work harder here to make it attractive for them to come back. Murti is doing his part. His software company, Infosys, hires about 150 IIT graduates every year to stay and work in India. He says the brain drain doesn't worry him. Sure, Nehru wanted all these young men and women to contribute to the success of India. And they are contributing to the success of India in some way because today the respect for the Indian professional is much higher in the United States than what it was in the 50s. 
But does that translate into investment money coming into India? Some of these people who have reached the higher, higher echelons in the corporate world in the U.S., you know, they have persuaded their corporations to start uh, operations in India whether it's Texas Instruments, whether it's General Electric, whether it's Citibank. So it does mean investment back here. Oh, yes, it does mean. I have no question that India now is benefiting significantly from the cycling of knowledge, the back and forth, no question about it. And individual IIT grads are sending lots of money back home, too. But the U.S. still gets the better end of the bargain. How many jobs have entrepreneurs Indian entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley created over the last 15, 20 years. Hundreds of thousands, I would guess. For this society. For this society here in America. For America to be able to pick off this human capital, these well-trained engineers with great minds, is a great deal.